second match here at the HSBC BWF China Masters 2023. Wang Ziyi takes on Han Yue in an all-Chinese semi-final in women's singles. So once again, there is the prospect possibly of a non-all-China final, also a very strong possibility of an all-China final. Let's see, three of the four semi-finalists are from China. There we go, there you saw her having to retire against Chen Yufei, who plays Kim Garten later on. Now we're gonna really hear the crowd get into this. So, see which one might be the more popular of the two. Wang comes out first. Tanya, hard to gauge. I guess you'd also say, well, if it's China versus China, maybe a bit less partisan the crowd. They can't really lose, can they? So, yeah, out next. Well, Hanya's. Uh, Southern China. That might help. We are in Southern China at the moment. Now, in terms of the head-to-head, 4-2 -head, in favour of Wang Ti. They met very recently the Arctic Open. Han Ye won that in three. No coaches, of course, when you are playing against a compatriot. Find out a little bit more about these players then. Wang Yi is uh, 23 years of age from Hubei. She's been 71 centimeters tall. She is a former top 10 player. She was number six in the world at the start of the year. Last year's Asian champion, and the former world junior champion. Mixed team events that uh, her results so far, what a win that was against An Su Young, the top seed from Korea, the most informed player in the world, and then beating former world number one, Nozomi Okuhara. Got three titles to a name as well. Wang Ziyi won that later. Han Yue is from the south of China, as I mentioned. 24 years of age, 168. She is playing at her highest ever ranking. And uh, former World Junior Mixed Team Championship. She's won gold. She's also got three titles to her name. There's her results. Was pushed by Yo Jamin and then Zhang Yiman. Her most recent title was the Arctic Open. We talked about where she beat Wang Ti, as we mentioned earlier, in the final. Got to the Thailand Masters final as well, where she lost to compatriot Zhang Yiman. Wang 
two years. I mentioned uh, the last few times that she hasn't won a title in four years. Dutch Open was the last one. In that year, she also won Indonesia Masters and the US Open. This year, the only final she's been to was that Arctic Open. Jiao Yue is the umpire from China. Lu Qingyang, service judge, also from China. All Chinese today. Thoughts on this one, Chris? Last time they met at the uh, Arctic Open, it was on my right. one, quite incredible. It was so China. close, it could have gone either way. And, my, and I think they're going to be in store for another China. very, very, very China. close game today. Yeah, before that uh, Arctic Open, they did play at the uh, All England, round of 16 China. in March. Wang Ti won that one. In straight games, 21-14, 21-16. Met a couple times last year as well. One so Hanya is the uh, high ranked player, but not by much. Actually, it's uh, once a year they played almost the same number of matches in their careers. Set there from uh, Wang Tzu Yi. Two hundred thirty-eight matches. Wang Tzu has played one hundred and seventy-nine wins, fifty-nine losses. Han Yue, two hundred thirty-two matches, one hundred forty-seven wins, eighty-five losses. So Wang Tzu overall has a better record. So this year, Han has played uh, fifty-nine matches, won forty, lost nineteen. Wang Tzu has played. 50 matches, won 31, lost 19. So slightly better year for Hanye. Oh. 3-1. Hanye, yeah, the uh, previous iteration of this tournament, the Futo China Open has never got past the second round. Apart from once, 2017, she got to the quarters. Oh. And this here is a bit of a showcase of, you know, the strength of Chinese ladies singles. You've got the third and fourth ranked Chinese players. And the third is Han Yu ranked eight in the world. Fourth is Wang ranked 12 in the world. And that's the third and fourth from <laughs> the same country, which is incredible. And obviously in the semi-final stage of a 750 tournament. Well, these two are the ones who need the points then as well, aren't they? Yeah, they've got the big challenge of catching Herbing Zhao to try and get that second spot for the uh, the Olympic qualifying. Great pick up. Ah! Yes, quick. Nice and composed though. Hand you there, where when your opponent gets a shot back, you almost don't expect, and it was good quality. You can sometimes overplay the next shot and try and play the next shot even better, but she didn't. Really calm, incredible shot. Well, that's good, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. It was just that short lift. Hand you goes up the line. 
the quality wasn't quite there. The depth really short allowed our opponent to step in and then have all the options. Well, Chen Yufei and Han Ye within the top eight for the finals. Step back. Yeah, Wang there just tried to predict what our opponent's going to do. Ready for the lift. Sees that. Quite a deceptive, nice little hold. But I do think after this tournament and the World Tour finals, we're going to see quite a change to the world rankings just because mm. pretty big points here and then yeah. very, very big points at the World Tour finals. And some players or pairs that have qualified or will qualify, I should say, sorry might not be necessarily the, the one to eight in the world just because of the way it works with tournaments and everything and how they've done. Mm. So it's going to be very interesting to see the world rankings and at the very end of the year the to see the how year. it changes right. from now. In Olympic year, were you guys like constantly checking on the sites and <laughs> refreshing and... I think it's, it's hard not to overanalyze sometimes <laughs> the world rankings just because you want to have an idea definitely, but if you overanalyze it, look in too much depth, it plays on your mind and it's something you can't change what it is right now you can change right. what it's going to be yeah. but then you have to focus on the future rather than already what's happened and it's so hard in limit qualifying because it is such a difficult year tournaments traveling what your uh, your competition's doing around you so for these two players being third and fourth ranked you know they're concerned about what the player ahead of them Herbing Zhao's doing because so they need to get. So ahead. you're looking at that as well. Yeah, and it's it's too many things you're worrying about. Whereas you just need to focus on yourself. But yeah. easy to say, hard to do. Yeah. yeah this uh, this year, I'm sure, has been a lot for everyone involved. Gone long there. On to you. Slightly too big a backswing there, and she ended up taking it fractionally behind her and almost mishit it slightly. Down the line there, haven't you? Seven, six. Oh, that's good. Clips the line. Eight, six. And it's going obviously in a similar fashion to this Arctic Open final, and it was it was so close the whole way. And I think the only difference, which was a minor difference, was Han Yu just played those final points in the second game slightly better than her opponent, held her nerve a fraction better. They're obviously the most important part of the game, the the later stage, the final bit. speed of players coming forward and she knows her opponent can't can't lift that over her can't put her in trouble with any kind of power so she knows she can chase forward and just attack it she's going back to the point i made about obviously the the final stage of the game being the most important it's the hardest bit to practice as well mm. because in training say you practice from 18 all it, it's totally irrelevant to an extent because yes it's still the end of the game but it's the conditions the feeling the environment everything's so different to a real match 
so hard to get better at those final points without practicing a tournament and being in that situation. Hey. Done, Montagne. Still hanging in there. Nine, and you had eight. control most of that rally. Wang did incredible to stay in it two or three times. Look at that dive, taking it literally off the floor. <laughs> Already at 10 minutes, and we haven't even got to the, the midpoint interval because almost every rally is a grueling rally. I think you, you and I have talked a bit before about when you're having a, a, a so called uh, an internal game, a match, you all know each other so well. Yeah, but just because you train together so much, you, you have a much better idea than. If you're playing anyone else from a different country, what they'd be doing because you're so used to it. Your body is, you, you see, often see um, doubles partnerships if there's two play, uh, pairs from a nation. Sometimes they can almost be designed to play against each other because ah. you get better from obviously playing the person you're playing, but you, you get so used to doing what they're doing that you get good at what they're doing to combat it. So it might be if one pair has a phenomenal attack or the other pair has a better defense than you would expect just because they're used to playing a good attack, something as right. simple as that. And it's the same in, in a singles game. They know each other so well that they can guess, guess is the wrong word, they can calculate, yeah. you know, so exact what their opponent's going to do. And, you know, every rally we're seeing is incredibly long because almost every single shot they know what the other one's going to do. Yeah, nothing to separate them right now. have dominated this event from its inception. Oh. Actually, interestingly enough, the mixed doubles, we just had the mixed doubles, there's Ten, never been nine. a non-Chinese winner in 15 editions of the tournament. So Xiao Sung Jae and Chai Yu Jung with an opportunity to turn that around. Oh, oh, oh. Well, Han probably could have won that a lot earlier, except for Wolsey's brilliance. Han Yek slumps into a seat. 11-9 up. These two have put a lot into it already. Absolute full stretch there. to be able to sit down, Chris, because you don't see seconds. the players do that very often in these, in these bricks. They're only doing it because there's no coaches around.
myself personally, I haven't been to China for a little bit just because of the COVID situation and so on. And it's quite incredible how Bamlin seems to have grown even more than last time I was here at the hotel. I've never seen so many security guards yeah. uh, trying to control fans mm. for um, being very, very excited for wanting the autograph or a picture or something yeah. with badminton players. And it just shows, obviously, I knew everyone knows how big badminton is in China, but it feels like it's growing even more and more and more. And this is one of the reasons why their supremacy is, is growing. Their new next generation coming through and at this tournament alone. Lady singles is an example. You've got three out of the four players, the Chinese, in the semi-final. Well, Chris isn't also telling you, so he got mobbed a couple of days ago. I had to pay pay the Chinese fans <laughs> to do that. <laughs> oh, he loved it. But it is it, um, interesting how so different the sport is in popularity and the, the, the Asian continent compared to the European, European. continent. Mm. And, you know, it's definitely one of the reasons why. It's not obviously the only reason, but it's definitely a reason why why Asia have such a strong um, amount of players 11, and depth. 13. Whereas, yeah. yes, Europe has a number of very, very good players. A lot of them are coming from Denmark. Yeah. Um, some others are coming from other European countries, but the majority do come from Denmark, where they have, you know, a number of phenomenal players in all different categories. But... It is such a big sport in Asia. And the fans over here are incredible. The passion they have for the game. Again, I've never seen badminton played on the streets before, as in we, personally. And you and I yeah. saw that on the way to our hotel the very first day. Yeah, and it's, yeah, that was quite late at night. People <laughs> outside on the street having a game of badminton, which is, you know, it's incredible to see. It really is. Yeah, had a three-point lead there. Sorry, Chris. Sorry, I was just thinking it was half ten at night in the, in the dark. Yeah. There were two gentlemen having a having a singles match <laughs> on a large part of the pavement. <laughs> there was something to behold. Oh, she missed it completely. Yeah, it just caught the tape, I think, and moved away from her racket. Just thinking as well, I saw that clip of Victor Axelson playing with the, uh, that family as well in China that was ah, is yes. incredible to see. And I think, not totally sure if it appeared they didn't know who he was, which was almost even nicer in a way. Yes. Just thought this tall, tall Danish guy or fair-haired gentleman wanted to play with them and playing with one of the, the greatest players on the planet at the moment. Yeah, talking about the, the power of, of China and badminton, I mean, he's, he's picked up Mandarin as well. Yeah, he's, he's one of those guys that he's got his head, you know, screwed on so well. He's such a disciplined, determined, hardworking guy that he understood uh, it would be sensible to try and learn mm. Mandarin. And to do that, though, is exceptional and yeah. find a teacher who can help him learn. Now I'm confident if I tried to, I would be rejected from a lot of teachers with how bad I'd be. Um, but it, it's amazing. Victor is such a hard-working, you know, he's such a hard-working, nice guy that he'll find a solution to kind of any problem that gets thrown at him. Yi, who needs a solution. She is trailing by three to Hanya, who just clips the net here for the point. It's the last thing you want, last one or two rallies, just to get in a fraction. A little bit fortunate with these net cords. 17-14, if the net cords have gone the other way, all of a sudden it's almost even pegging. Again, falling for it, she knows it. Her way. 
nothing you can do when your opponent gets a neck cord. It's so hard to yeah. deal with it. Because you don't really know which direction or where the shuttle's going to exactly go or how much spin, and it moves in a direction that you can't predict. Yeah, you've done four here. Whenever you played against other England players as well, is because of familiarity, you know, how, how easy is it to just put that block in so you know you've got to get your game face on against your opponents? I think it's always a, it was always a slightly strange game mm. just because it almost feels like a training game. Yeah. But obviously a much bigger stage. <laughs> yeah, with more people watching and <laughs> on TV. And, but it's, it is a tricky one just because it... It's always a slightly odd game um, and how to deal with it, you know, mentally and tactically. Do you play totally different from how you normally play so that ah. your, your opponent can't predict that, but then force that out and then six game points here. Can yeah. you actually do that consistently? So there's so many other things and this is why you either get, uh, we think of the mixed doubles last week um, when we had the all Chinese, Zeng Siwei against Fung. In the mixed doubles, yeah. the first game was quite incredible and so close and so competitive, could have gone either way. And then the second game kind of fell the apart opposite, slightly. Yeah. yeah, and it's exactly what can happen. That is good. And Hunt, yeah, wraps up the first game, perhaps a little bit more convincingly than many might have thought. It was tight, wasn't it, until in the interval time. And uh, after that, she was pretty dominant. So, at the break, uh, at the end of the first game, it's 21-14, Hanye. Second game, level play. So nicely done by Han Yue in that first game. Let's see how Wang Zi does here in this end. Hasn't really seemed to be a factor today so far.
did well there, didn't she, Hanya? Service over one all. So Hanya's been a lot more, I'll say a lot, she, I wouldn't say a lot, but she's been definitely more aggressive, taking charge of the rallies, and Wang's been on the defence a lot more, having to try and contend with the attack. And following the pace a bit more rather than trying to dictate Wang. That's good. Just silenced me there. <laughs> Great rally. has been in five Three, semi finals one. this year. She's won two of them. The last one she was in, the Denmark Open, she lost to Chen Yufei. She dominated that rally, Hanya. Yeah, she did, and she is playing very, very well. Three. Creativity at the net, turning that from down there, and the accuracy on these two attacks. That's good, and then this is very good. Even wider, yeah. Turning the shot so well at the net, keeping hold of the net, forcing our opponent to have to lift. been in two semi-finals this year. Two. Won both of them at the US. Sorry, one final this year, I should say. Semi, semi-final, let me start again. Singapore Open and the US Open, sorry, the two semi-finals that she's been in. So this would be her first semi-final in about a year and a half. Again, it's the creativity in the attack, the variation, control of the rally. Wang's on the back foot most rallies. Mm, yeah. We have had two unforced errors from Han Yu at the start of this, which is obviously half the points Han Yu's currently on, but she is controlling the majority of the game. Han Yu. in her career, she's had 18 semi-finals in contrast to five, just the two for Hatsu Yi. She's won eight of those 18. She's uh, only won one of four against fellow Chinese players, Han Yue, in semi-finals. Service over, six, four. Good tight net, and you can see Wang's having to take it so low. The only way that's going to go is over is if she hits it incredibly high, which she couldn't quite manage to do, because the angle she was at.
few mistakes from both ladies and just creeping in. Knowing that to win the rally at the moment, almost got to do something special. Once a year, she's Seven, given 15 semi finals overall. A 1 8 lost 7. The last one being the Arctic Open, of course. She beat PB Sindhu there. And against uh, Chinese players in the semi finals, she's won 2 out of 6. You. Just at a point in the game where both players they have made more unforced errors than we'd seen, I think, in the whole of the first game. Both of them need to steady the ship just a little bit, play the full rally out, don't force it too early, and give your opponent a, an easy point. Nice, done again, Hanya, and she draws Seven, level four. here. I do think the first game, although it wasn't incredibly long in duration, it did take a lot out of both players mm. just because the intensity they was played at. Oh. It's interesting, Chris, because you know um, so earlier you were saying these these eight, two seven. are the lower two of the of the big four at the moment for China and. When you look at their overall career, they, they actually have losing records against fellow Chinese players. 13 out of 25 for Han Ye. 10 out of 27 for Wang Zi Yi. I think a lot of those, uh, Chen Yufei has a real <laughs> stranglehold over yeah. the other Chinese players. Yeah. Obviously being the highest ranked, but she's so consistent when she plays another Chinese player that it's amazing in some of the recent tournaments when you look, Chen Yufei beats some of them two or even three Chinese players in the mm. tournaments just because of the strength of China in ladies singles. Over. Got a challenge here from Wang. Wang Zhiyi, candidate Charles Paul. Nothing else gives you a bit of a break. <laughs> they look tired, don't they? They look a bit gassed. And yet, draws level here. Ooh. That penultimate shot was an interesting one. She kind of batted it away, didn't she? There you go. Good, Good body so attack up. there. And you was very dominant on the forehand. It went slightly across. She almost swiped at it. Couldn't really control the shot. She made the last shot for Wang comfortable to her to put it away. Shot that is for Anya. Straight winner. And that almost came out of nowhere. Mm. And that was just a moment of brilliance. Just to clear that short. Okay, yeah, the clear's fractionally short. Placement incredible. See how she's striking this. Still slightly off balance, but yeah, the clear is a bit short. Probably only front, front rear tram line. I think you mentioned earlier, she, 
feels like she dominates most of these rallies. Han Yue. Yeah, and I'd say that was one rally where maybe she wasn't in control of the right. rally and, yeah. and still managed to kind of turn the rally on its head. And yet it's 9 all, yeah. despite all this. Anu's definitely one taking the game on, trying to take control of the rallies, and by doing that, yes, you're going to win more rallies, but also you're going to make more unforced errors. She'll be the more creative one. a little bit stuck with her footwork. Didn't quite lunge to it, off balance. Ends up just missing it slightly. That's it's Bonte Yi, who has a slender one-point lead here going into the interval of this second game. But it's Han Yue who leads overall. She won that first game, 21-14. To you. It was a little passive, perhaps, in the post-interval session of the last game. That's when Hanya really surged ahead. Great play there, Hanya. Yeah, steps in, nice little hold. It's a little bit of deception. It's going to be interesting if, if it does stay nip and tuck right up to the end of this second game. Oh. And if we're going to see a challenge there. Service over. Yeah, she uh, 13, opted 11. not to. Important for Han Yu just to stay in breathing, breathing distance, because obviously winning the first game just adds that little bit of pressure on our opponent. Service over, five thirteen. Yeah, she's still not able to really surge yet. 
Also, he keeps getting pegged back by him, yeah. And yet, has not had the lead at all in this second game. I do wonder if the final from the Arctic Open will come into play at all, just because in that game, I do think Wang was in control the majority of the first two games and obviously ended up losing the match. Brilliant shot, brilliant shot. And if it's close in this second game, is that going to come into effect? Is that going to play a part? Is that going to linger in the back of her mind? take the lead for the first time here in this second game. Once again, denied taking the lead. Well played for Han Yeah, it was brilliant there in the rally. The rally kind of turns slightly. So Wang had control and then she plays a lift. It's that lift really high and central. And then that in trouble and then brilliant shot there. Well, she's had a number of outwork winners in the second game. Han These are the crucial points, what are we going to see? Are we going to see anyone tighten up? So for the first time in this second game, Han Ye takes the lead and what a time to be doing it. She increases it now. Yeah, and the shot quality from Wang there, the last two, three shots, just not quite good enough. Uh, not wide enough. You can see opponents on... and use on balance, and she's been so dangerous from that round the head. Hitting cross-court, hitting straight. Just out. She's going to challenge this. It's a massive challenge. Just out. Chen Li Jie, I'm 
for one candidate remaining. Turn forward now by players of calmness in the rally. For Wang, she's not too passive. For Han Yu, she's not too aggressive. She's finding that middle ground, that balance. She's dictating it all the yeah, time. She is, she? But again, it was probably two or three shots from the end, that lift, where Wang tries to kind of go cross court, but it goes very central. So, yeah, so central. And then it's just the pressure after that. So Wang's not helping herself at times. Well, some of the shot quality is not quite good enough. She's not stretching her opponent enough. We've seen how dangerous Han Yu is if she's on balance over. from any overhead position. She's definitely been the more aggressive of the two. What a big point this is now. Is it going to be 17, 18 or 19, 16? Yeah. So 19, 16 and a game up. Give Han Yu big control of this second game. And again, taking yeah. on that round the head side. She's been so accurate. She's now set up four match points. Great reception, and this would be, she was to finish this. Han Yu, this would be the first ever time in China that she would have beaten her opponent, having lost the two previous times they played each other. Stay of execution for now, Wang Ziyi. Three match points here. Oh, it's good. Plenty <laughs> keeps herself in this. that last lift so early put her opponent in trouble and then took control of the rally I don't think we've seen that quite enough mm. isn't quite but it's almost a reversal of the Arctic Open saying you man won the first and she was leading in the second and it got snatched from her that was the first time she'd gone at consecutive points in a long time and yeah, wins though. She has been good throughout and is into her third final of 2023. Point to you. Maybe perhaps missing some of the quality that Chris was talking about in that second game in particular. Hanya, excellent. And she's going to hit a shuttle into the crowd. Oh, it's all short. <laughs> the worst shot she's played all day. Yeah, it's the only time she hasn't had perfect length. She's got another <laughs> one, though. Oh, someone's just managed to keep it in. But well done to Hanyu. 
She was good throughout the second game especially, wasn't she? Yeah, first game she played really well. The second game she great to come back from that deficit at the start, take control, and the nerve to see it out at the end. So, in the all-Chinese women's single semi-final, Han Ye, the 8th seed, beats Wang Ziyi, compatriots. 21-14, 21-18, it's taken 48 minutes. Another all-Chinese semi-final coming up. Mixed doubles, Zheng Zhiwei, Huang Yachong, taking off Feng Yangchen, Wang Dongping.